So, we just finished reacting to the back rooms, literally in the last video. Now we're going to watch Back Rooms Explained by the Infographics Show, because I was actually quite terrified of that video. I'm probably going to watch it again in the future, but as of right now, probably not right now, because I don't know anything about it, but we're about to learn something about it today in this video by the Infographic Show. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and react to this and understand what we just watched in the last video. So, without further ado, guys, I'm going to hit play in three, two, one. Go. It's an ordinary Tuesday afternoon at an ordinary office building. There we go. Grace, an intern, gets on the elevator in the garage. She's bound for the CEO's office on the 10th floor. Just as the doors close, Rob, a junior sales agent, hops in. Previously, Grace had been a victim of one of Rob's little pranks, pressing all the buttons right before he gets off on the first floor. This made the elevator stop on every floor and caused Grace to be lectured for returning from break a few minutes late. Today, she's ready. First floor, the elevator doors open. Rob steps out and turns back to run his hand down the button panel. In a move worthy of a ninja, Grace maneuvers around him and lightly shoves his shoulder. Surprised, Rob stumbles back into the elevator. Grace tosses him a smug grin as the doors close. Sure, she has to wait for another elevator, but it's worth it. Annoyed, Rob repeatedly mashes the door open button and the lights in the elevator flicker and it pauses for almost an imperceptible second before it continues to rise. Rob doesn't know it yet, but he's just no clipped out of reality. The elevator beeps for the second floor. Really? The doors open. Rob leaps out. Well, he looks around in like sudden confusion. Dimension. On either side of him are long hallways. In front of him is a large empty office space. He can't remember what color the walls in his office are, but he's sure that they weren't a dingy sunshine yellow. He turns around to go back into the elevator, but the wall behind him is solid. No elevator. Disbelieving, Rob feels the wall. It's cold, almost damp, but smooth with no cracks. Rob doesn't know how they did it, but he's sure it's a joke. He turns back to the empty office and walks forward. You got me, guys, he says, fully expecting a bunch of co-workers to pop out with their cell phones, recording their amazing prank. His voice echoes slightly in the vastness of the empty space. There's no answer. The room is still, except for the loud hum of the fluorescent lights. It smells quite unpleasantly of old paper, stale coffee, and mildew. The annoying buzz from the lights is making Rob's head throb. If it keeps up, he'll have a migraine. He takes out his cell phone. His fingers are okay. slippery with perspiration as he texts. The message icon just spins. It can't send his message. Well, Rob scenario. tries calling, but the line is dead. His phone doesn't have any bars. On. He walks all over the office space, holding his phone up, trying to see if he can get better reception. Squish. His expensive leather loafer sinks into the soggy tan carpet in the right corner of the room. In fact, a patch of carpet so wet, tiny toadstools are sprouting. A sudden odd grunting, growling noise makes Rob spin around. A chill skitters down his spine. Across the room is something. It looks like a human crawling on its hands and feet, but the elbow and knee joints are bent the other way. Its face is surrounded by shaggy, matted, dark hair. The creature tilts its head up and sniffs the air yeah, before the making a grunting growl again. At first, Rob is frozen, but he gets a hold of him. I assume it's a different depiction of the creature we saw in the last video. Self. Hugging the wall at his back, he begins to sidestep toward the entrance in the next room. The creature hangs back. It seems to be intimidated by the eye contact. Its cold black eyes stare back at Rob. It has a weird, aggressive smile on its face, but it's not coming closer. Rob's almost to the entrance when disaster strikes. The moist mildew smell wafting from the carpet makes him sneeze. He breaks eye contact. The creature grunt growls and charges toward him. It is a strange, quick gait. Rob turns and runs. The next room is the same, overly cheerful yet dingy yellow walls, moist tan carpet, and buzzy, glaring fluorescent lights. Rob dashes across the room. The creature's gaining on him. The room ends in a T-shaped hallway. Rob zags right. He slips, barely managing to stay on his feet. His loafers weren't made for running on moist carpet. Rob runs down the hallway, passing several rooms. They're all the same, yellow and tan. There's a loud growl behind him. Rob looks back. The creature has been joined by a second beast. They're gaining on Rob. They can't be more than 20 feet away. Their toothy grins are terrifying. Up ahead, the hallway dead ends. Rob barely has time to turn around before they attack. He kicks one in the face. Its head snaps back and it whimpers. The other creature claws at Rob's chest. He pushes it away and kicks it too. The creature gloms onto his shoe, sinking its teeth into the leather and yanking it free. It chews on its prize while the other creature growls at Rob menacingly. But it doesn't come any closer as Rob stares at it. Without breaking eye contact, Rob reaches down, takes off his other shoe, and tosses it. 
The creature springs after it. Rob manages to sidle past the first creature who's engrossed in ripping apart Rob's hand-stitched loafer. He ducks into her room. Once out of the sight of the creatures, he <coughs> runs on socked feet through the room, and then another and another. Several rooms later, Rob collapses in a heap on the floor, his heart's galloping a mile a minute. What were those things? Where is he? The room he's in is the same as all the others except for one difference. In a corner is a five-drawer file cabinet. Once Rob catches his breath, he wanders over and tries opening each of the drawers. I see this is a creepypasta. Right? Or sadly, they're all locked. Rob walks in. Sorry, there's not really much to talk about. It's just kind of explaining what we already watched in the last, uh, in the last video. So. I'm just waiting for them to bring up, like, information. To another room. He feels gross. He has wet patches on his slacks from where he sat down. His socks are clammy. His cell phone is missing. He lost it while escaping the creatures. He doesn't know what to do, so he keeps walking. He goes into the next room. And the next. It's a veritable maze of yellow offices with tan carpets. Suddenly, he hears something. The sound is faint, but somehow familiar. Rob strains to hear, but the sound stops. He walks in the direction he thinks the sound's coming from. Two rooms later, he hears it again. It's a telephone. It's ringing. The ringing is echoing. The ringing phone means communication. It means other people. Perhaps it even means a way out of here, wherever this place is. But first, Rob has to find the phone. Rob takes off his socks. He'd rather walk barefoot on the gross carpet. Moist socks freak him out. He also takes off his belt. He wants to be prepared in case those horrible creatures show up again. The next room, of course, is the same as all the others, but it has a lone desk. The desk drawers are not locked. One has paper clips, several ballpoint pens, and a highlighter. Rob tries writing on the wall, but the chartreuse highlighter can't be seen against the yellow. The other drawer is empty except for a crumpled, half-full bag of stale tortilla chips. Oh, Rob suddenly realizes that he's not hungry or tired. In fact, he's lost all sense of time. He looks at his watch. It stopped. How long ago, it's hard to say. Rob walks on. Sometimes the rooms have an item or two, but most times they don't. As he walks, he has conversations in his head with his co-workers, the kind of chat one has when they find themselves in the break room waiting for their coffee to brew. How about those Dodgers <laughs> last night? You're going to surprise the wife with a 20th anniversary trip to Tahiti? That sounds amazing. Sucks that little Caitlin needs braces. Our dental plan isn't that great. Rob also talks to Grace <laughs> in his head. Sorry about the elevator. I'm just blowing off some steam. You're pretty. I wish I knew how to talk to you instead of resorting to juvenile pranks to get your attention. He wonders what magic Grace did to transport him to this desolate yellow hellscape. Rob can hear the phone ringing loud and clear now, although it's still hard to know exactly where it's coming from. He sees the creatures a few more times. He stares them down and cracks his belt at them. They reluctantly slink away. He also sees a lady in a power suit with a shell-shocked expression, but she scurries away before he can say anything to her. Then almost unexpectedly, he steps into a room just like all the others, except there's a black business phone on a desk in the center of the room. Rob sits down to wait. It's not long before the phone rings. His hand trembling, Rob picks it up. Hello? He's surprised to find that his voice is rusty from disuse. He clears his throat and tries again. <clears throat> Hello? The line is buzzy. The connection, not the greatest. It takes a moment for Rob to process what the woman on the phone is yelling about. It's been a long time since anyone has spoken to him. The technician was supposed to come to her house between 9 and 4 and it's now 4.17 and no one has showed up. And what is he going to do about it? Rob sets the phone down. He gets under the desk and lays there in the fetal position. He doesn't care that his button-up shirt is getting wet. The back rooms. Depending on whom you ask, there are over yeah, 100 levels go. of back rooms, each simply waiting for some poor, unsuspecting soul to somehow glitch out of reality and get stuck in a horrific maze. Some levels have horrible humanoid monsters. Some levels are gaily decorated with balloons and bunting that says happy birthday. Of course, were you to show up for a birthday party in the back rooms, chances are you would not survive the killer clowns. Some purists insist there's only three levels to the back rooms. I'm inclined to believe that only a single level exists. No. When the image of an empty office with cheap, tan, stain-resistant carpet, fluorescent lighting, and yellow walls was posted in a paranormal forum, it resonated with so many because it spoke of our existential nightmares. It's a metaphor for the horrors of modern life, that for many of us our job is meaningless, unfulfilling, and rife with endless bureaucracy. The ultimate horror isn't a werewolf who wants to use your left shin bone as a chew toy, or a vampire that wants to drain you of your blood or any other made-up horror, but a soul-sucking job. But what do I know? 
I'm just an overworked, caffeinated, underpaid writer sitting in a drab cubicle with nothing except for my laptop surrounded by other overworked, caffeinated, underpaid writers sitting in their drab cubicles, each of us maniacally typing away, striving to meet deadlines. Now go watch the crazy results of a 1940s experiment by Russian scientists, or watch this to find out. That didn't really answer my question, but it seemed more like a creepy pasta to me. At least it does to me. That's how it seems. Um, but I, I will look more into the back rooms in the future. But as of right now, I think I'm going to leave it there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed rea my reaction to the back rooms and to the back rooms explained. I will see you guys in whatever the heck I upload next, really. I have no plan for what I upload, truthfully. I just go with it. That's how I how I do things. But, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.